Good morning to everyone in South Africa. Thank you for joining us today and thank you for your patience. We were just making sure we have enough people and your colleagues have joined. So yes, we have a lot of people who have joined. We have about 50 people now. And uh, we hope you're all keeping well and safe. Thank you for your time and joining us for this webinar, Utilizing Technology for Student Success. My name is Sarah Shuja and I'm a Marketing Manager based in the Dubai office. Before we proceed, I'm just going to pause and do a quick sound check and just to check if the audio connection is all right. So there's a hand icon on the right side of your screen. You will find the hand icon just below your name. Uh, please click on the hand icon if you can hear me. Excellent. Lots of hands going up. Brilliant. So we have an exciting session planned for you today, and I'll just briefly go over what we're going to cover. Firstly, you'll hear from Ralph Azar, how you can partner for success and in ways in which McGraw-Hill can support you do that, followed by our wonderful speaker, Gail Kotze, who's going to do a deep dive into how teaching can be aligned for constructive learning and how you can design your courses and develop teaching materials that can lead to student success. And uh, lastly, we'll hear from Rob Lowe, who is going to enlighten us with Connect Head Start, which is a student preparedness program uh, designed to help incoming first-year students, and especially useful now with the education dynamics uh, changing since the pandemic. Now, moving on to your moderators for today. I have with me my colleagues, Afsana and Michelle. We will be there in the background to answer any questions that you have or you, if you face any trouble during the webinar. Um, so you can just troubleshoot it to us and we will sort of be there in the background to help you out. I would also like to introduce you to our wonderful speakers, Ralph Azar, who is the Business Development Manager at McGraw-Hill for Middle East and Africa. Gail Kotze, who is an independent education consultant for a number of higher education institutes in South Africa, and also Lob Rowe, who is a sales director for higher education and digital services at McGraw Health for UK NICC. Thank you all for your valuable time and joining us today. So thank you to our wonderful speakers. And uh, I guess lastly, I just want to cover a few housekeeping slides just to ensure we've got a sim uh, seamless webinar experience. And once you've logged into the webinar, you will have to connect to the audio. Um, you will have to connect to the audio in order to hear us. I'm just going to drop the link how you can connect to the audio in the chat box. So in case you're not still able to hear us, make sure you're connected to the audio. Although we checked this earlier, most of you can hear my voice anyway, but if you're still facing any connectivity issue with the audio, we recommend you use the call-in function with your phone. Next, we recommend closing down any high networking apps such as Netflix or YouTube or any gaming platform because this is going to affect the bandwidth during the webinar. And uh, you'll also be receiving a certificate for this webinar. The session is being recorded. So after you attend the session, you'll be able to receive a certificate via email. So make sure you watch out your inbox for that email. You'll be able to download it. So you can download the certificate um, that's going to come in about 48 hours. Uh, you'll probably get it by Monday. Uh, we have a Q&A opportunity towards the end. So you will see that we'll cover question answers in the end. However, if you have any questions, you can drop them to us and we'll ask and we'll answer this as we go along. Just to locate where the chat box and the Q&A is, um, so you must have noticed you're all muted. And that's because it's just the session how we're aligned it, but you are able to engage with the speaker with the Q&A box and the chat box. You must have also noticed you can only see yourself in the webinar. Uh, this is because of GDPR purposes, so you won't be able to see the other participants who have joined in, their names and everything. But you can interact with the presenter for, with the Q&A box and the chat box. A Q&A box is located on the right side of the corner of your screen, and we encourage you to ask any questions, and we'll try to cover it as we go along. You can also use the chat box for any comments you have, or you can, if you want to engage with the presenter, you can just do that. Our moderators are there in the background to sort of like help you out. Now, without any delay, I'll just pass over to Ralph now. Ralph, you've got the presenter rights now. You should be able to change the slides. Thank you, everyone. We hope you have a great day. 
Thank you, Serish. Uh, well, firstly, I'd like to say good morning from sunny Beirut, which is uh, unlikely for this time of year. Uh, generally, by mid-November, we're uh, we're all covered in clouds and 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 rain. Uh, but this morning seems to be a very sunny and bright day, and uh, I'm I'm very happy that Madeline and the uh, South Africa team invited me to speak to you today. Um, it's, it is, it is indeed a pleasure. So today, today we have a, we have an interesting discussion for you. We're going to be talking about utilizing technology for student success. And that's sort of a follow up from the first webinar that we had a few weeks ago, where we discussed getting universities online in 48 hours. Now, the three of us today are going to, uh, you know, we're going to address the topic from, from three, three perspectives, the what, the how, and the why. And quite interestingly, when we, when we think about, when we think about partnering, you, you, you know, you automatically start thinking about why would I want to partner with a company? What is it that they can offer me and how can we make this partnership work? Well, we're going to, we're going to tell you about that today. So when we say when we say partnership, what is it what is it really that we mean? I mean, what are we really talking about? So when we when we talk about when we talk about a partnership, we're we're basically looking at how we can address you and how we can and how we can support you to succeed. Now for any for any partnership to be successful, the essence of a partnership needs to have some uh, um, some, you know, grounds covered in it. So we need to have a purpose. We need to have a win-win situation. We need to be targeting going for a change together, moving from point A to point B and making sure that everybody, everybody who's in this partnership is a winner. And we also need to be aware of time and uh, we need to have a, a pace that we're going so nobody's going faster than the other, nobody's going slower than the other. And we also need to know the cost that is involved in it. So the cost is not just on the customer side. There's also investment from the from the vendor side to make sure that we have we have the, the as we say we have the stars aligned together. Now what does this mean? How can we how can we help as a company? How is McGraw Hill uh, suited to become to become your partner? Sorry I keep <laughs> I keep clicking on the keyboard to move the slides. Um, so some of you who've attended the uh, presentations and demos with us before might have seen this slide. So this slide is really a representation of the new McGraw Hill, the learning science company. So we're not just your friendly neighborhood publisher anymore. We, we've evolved over the years into becoming a fully fledged learning science company where we address your needs, look at what it is that you're trying to achieve, find best ways that we can help you achieve. So for example, if one of the, if, I mean, if going online was one of your, one of your, uh, one of your objectives, what we can do is help you build on and, and maximize your current technology investments and your learning management systems and other systems and help you achieve a flipped classroom. We can, we can we can help you achieve teaching and learning consistency by making sure that the same material goes to everybody on campus. Um, we we help you make sure consistency stays with our assessment models, uh, with our with our uh, you know reporting models, etc. Et for data integrity. Um, some some universities that we've seen and and we can we can give a few examples on those um, have opted to go for their own content uh, because of consistency reasons and also cost. Um, we've also found ourselves uniquely positioned to help those universities that already have the content and have the talent pool with their professors, uh, being able to in embed their content into our platforms where they can benefit from all the, the services and all the technology offerings that that platform has to offer. Um, this is one of those slides where you can spend three minutes or three days on, so I'm just going to limit myself to, to, to this discussion right now. If there's anything else you'd like to know, I'm happy, you know, to, to take this conversation forward. 
um, was a team was a team from South Africa. Clicking the keyboard again. All right. So we talked about the how. The how is what we have are content, learning platforms, reporting solutions, and professional implementation services. We have award-winning content from across the world. It can be delivered in any language that you need. Uh, we can help you personalize the content and customize it for your region, for your specific country, for your specific university. Our tools help you help the students learn better by having an adaptive method where the system learns about how the student is, is willing to, to get educated and then, and then basically deliver that education in that, in that specific way. Now, moving, moving on, you can benefit from our assessment modules where uh, your, your questions are already built in where everything is already there for you. you. You have the opportunity to modify it and, and add to it. And then at the end of it, this is where we can help you deliver an entire course from scratch based on ideations and, and thoughts that you might have. So this, this is in a nutshell where we would work with you. We would try to understand where you are today, where you would like to be tomorrow, what it is that you're trying to achieve and how we can help you achieve it. That is, that is discussing the, the how. So, in summary, why, why would partnering with a company like us be of any interest to, to you? So what we, will, what we bring to the table is the teaching consistency, the flexibility, the technology platforms, the understanding of pedagogy and education, and the ability to work with you as a team to build up your objectives and then help you achieve them. We can also, we can also work with you on, on improving the educational experience for your constituents. And my, my colleague, Gail, my next, the next presenter on this, on this panel is, is going to do also a a what, why, how discussion into making education more effective and to making education more meaningful. So I've basically covered with you the the management and operation side of the of the quadrant. Um, Gail and Rob, who will be talking about uh, you know being ready for the next steps in education, will be covering with you the teaching and learning and learning part, and then. All of us bring it together. We would we would help you in your digital transformation, moving it from uh, where you are today to where you would like to be tomorrow, um, with having the right partner, not just somebody who would collect data for you. It's not somebody who would just provide you a platform to access PDF files. It's it's something that goes way beyond that into being a real learning science company help you challenge the ideas that you have today, help you look at different ideas that you might have tomorrow, um, and, and basically provide the technology and the incumbent uh, to achieve all of that. Um, that's it for me. I'm going to be available for questions if you have them, and I'm also available offline. Uh, thank you so much for, for joining us today and the opportunity to speak to you. Uh, right now, I'm going to hand over to our next speaker, and I'd like to welcome Gail. Uh, thank you for joining us today. We really appreciate you taking the time. The controls are now yours. Thank you, Gail. Thank so much, Rob. Um, I'm going to start my video and just say hi, um, if I can get it to start just so that you can see the person behind the voice. Oh, dear. Ah, oh, there I am. Okay, I just wanted to say hi. Um, I'm going to turn off my video again um, to make sure that it doesn't slow down my connection. Okay, thanks so much. Uh, the topic that I was asked to address today um, is constructive alignment within the context of course design. 
Um, and like, like Rob said earlier, McGraw Hill um, is, is a learning science company. And so, so they just, they don't just do tools. Um, because it's very important to, to realize that um, software and tools won't take care of it for us. Um, in the words of John Biggs, who coined the concept of constructive alignment, we are going to look at how to align our teaching to make sure that our students construct learning or construct meaning. And so we will have a look at McGraw Hill, um, the platforms, the tools, and the processes, et cetera. But I just first want to uh, cast the net a little wider and just look at a few principles before uh, we look at examples a bit later on. So <clears throat> I like to use the analogy of climbing Kilimanjaro, which I haven't done, and I'm not planning on doing so, but I have a lot of respect for people who do. But if you arrive at the, the foot of Kilimanjaro, with a whole lot of tools, but you don't have a map, you won't be able to do the climb. Um, so, and, and that's the same with course design. As lecturers, we basically involve in two processes. We gather information and we design a course. We make decisions about how this course will be taught. And then we have student interactions. And I think we typically feel more comfortable with the second part where we interact with our um, students. And I'm hoping that the session today um, can inspire you uh, in terms of the course design part of it and what we kind of have to do first before we can get to a point where we interact with students. I don't want to underplay the importance of tools, uh, especially in our current um, circumstances where we have to you know, get on board very quickly, those of us who were relying on contract alone um, to get students on board. But let's have a look at, at, at the broader context first uh, before we get to that part. So I also, I also have a why, what, and how. <laughs> um, and like uh, Rolf uh, rightly earlier said, I will be focusing a lot on the how. But just before we get there, it will be important to have a look at why it is important to look at the concept of constructive alignment in course design, then exactly what it is, what, what the principle entails, and then the main focus um, for, the, for the second part of the presentation will be on the how. So what does it mean in practice to apply the principle of constructive alignment? And I think that is what people are typically interested in. We can talk about the concept um, for a day, uh, but that's not going to help you in terms of the practical implementation of it. So I will get to that. We will look at a generic example first, and then I will also look at um, applying the Connect platform and tools um, and how we can help you to structure um, your course and to make sure that, that the learning is meaningful. And that brings me to a concept of significance and meaningful learning. As lecturers, I think, <clears throat> we want to obviously achieve um, uh, quite a number of things with, with, with our students. Um, I, I can think of things like equipping our students to be lifelong learners, encouraging critical thinkers uh, who could use knowledge um, in future to move beyond content knowledge, to achieve deep learning. So really, um, there, are, there are a few questions that we can ask ourselves, and I think that for me the main one is how do we encourage students to engage in, engage in, this, in the type of learning that will help them to develop the capabilities associated with higher education. So we need to look for ways to provide students with significant learning experiences. And what that basically means is that it's more than just putting information about the content into their short-term memory. So it's not the, the focus is not on what you teach, but how, what they learn, not the content. Um, but, but it being learning centered, and we're going to have a look at that concept in more depth in a moment. And then when change occurs in students, we know that the learning has been significant. <clears throat> I apologize for my voice. I have allergies. So if, I, if, it, if it comes and goes, I, I apologize. So, uh, we're lucky in the sense that a lot of research on how to optimize student learning exists um, and various factors impact on student learning, and, and we know what they are. There's been a lot of research. We have organized sets of principles that explain to us how students learn 
and what these lectures can do to help students learn. So it doesn't matter what level your students are, in which discipline you specialize, whether it's face-to-face, -face, whether it's blended, whether it's distance learning, the basic principles of learning stay the same and they don't change. And if you, if you analyze these principles, I wanna highlight three things and this will run as a golden thread through our um, journey this morning. Um, <clears throat> engagement or active learning certainly is, is one important thing and that goes with collaboration. So we need to get students to collaborate and to engage um, with learning material, with other students, with us. Um, then the second one is alignment. And this is really just to emphasize how alignment fits into a bigger picture. So constructive alignment is not something that happens in isolation. Uh, it's one of our key principles when we design learning that we have to keep in mind. So things like connecting information to prior knowledge, organizing our content in meaningful ways. Um, and that's something that, that that connect us really well. We'll look at it um, later on. And then uh, uh, um, uh, identifying explicit aims and outcomes for your course. Then the third thing is learning centeredness. And that really is just, it simply means focusing on what you want students to learn. So um, uh, problem solving, feedback is very important. We'll look at repositioning our assessment um, to form part of the learning process. The set for understanding, and then including authentic real world applications. So just keep those three things in mind as we um, go through the, the rest of the session. So that brings me to why is it important to look at constructive alignment this morning? There are basically two approaches to, to course design. The one is a very traditional type of approach, often referred to as a content centered approach or the list of topics approach. So often a lecturer would take a handbook or two textbooks uh, and they would identify topics that they want students to cover and then decide how many tests they'll give the students um, and then focus on the content that students must learn. That is the one way of doing it. The way that McGraw Hill does it um, and, that, and that we're going to talk about uh, a little bit more is, is a more learning centered approach. And at the heart of this approach is to decide first what students can and should learn in relation to your subject area, and then figure out how such learning can be facilitated. So the key aim is for students to have a significant learning process, uh, um, uh, learning experience, and it's really just a more systematic um, process that we follow. So I said earlier that when we teach, we engage in two things course design, and then interacting with students. Like the basic principles of learning do not change, the basic principles of learning design don't change. It doesn't matter whether you're designing a course for online, blended, face-to-face, -face, um, uh, first-year students or honors level students. The basic principles of how to design a course and what needs to be present in a well-designed systematically designed course do not change. And um, we have these guidelines as well at our disposal. And again, I just want you to, when you, while you read through the bullet points, to just pay attention to the three, our three aspects in terms of our golden thread, again, that you'll see will reappear um, in these learning design uh, principles. The, the engagement, the aspect of engagement, the aspect of collaborative learning, that students have to collaborate um, with other students, collaborate with the lecturer, interact with their learning material. Alignment again, aims and learning outcomes must be clear. There must be signposting. Courses must be evaluated and feedback given by students. Learning centeredness, um, opportunities for students to apply um, learning are using assessment as a strategic tool for enhancing learning and not just a way to um, to, to, to uh, put a rubber stamp on, on the knowledge that students gained in the course, self-directed learning, and then feedback again. So really our golden thread, everything's built around these um, key concepts. 
And luckily, they just they, they remain they remain the same. We just need to adjust the way that we use them in our design to align them to whatever um, the characteristics of our students, of our course, of our subject matter, of our environment. So this brings me to what? What is constructive alignment? It's important to keep in mind that constructive alignment is a principle. It's not a model that you can that you can follow. It's a principle that you use to design a course in a systematic way that makes sense ultimately. And, and in a way that will support student learning. So the fundamental principle of, of constructive alignment is that a good teaching system aligns your, your teaching method with your assessment um, to the learning activities, uh, which is stated in your learning outcomes. And then obviously your content also has to speak to everything else. So constructive refers to what the student does. So they construct meaning. But they construct it through relevant learning activities that we as lecturers must put in place for them. Alignment therefore refers to what we do as, as lecturers that support the learning activities appropriate to achieving um, the learning outcomes. So all aspects must just speak to each other. And we're going to have a look at an, an example um, in a moment to, to see how this comes alive and what this means in practice. So I want you to move on now from the principle to, to a process. Um, so what is the process that this principle um, supports? Um, there are many approaches and models of instructional design or course design, and many of them are built around the concept of constructive alignment. You may have heard the, the term backward design, um, and this is also the, the approach that um, SACWA supports, our South African Qualifications Authority. Um, you'll see in SACWA documents, um, they use a, a very similar set of principles um, to guide lecturers in designing uh, courses. So really, the backward thing has to do with where you start and where you jump to next. So you always start with your question, your outcomes, that, uh, like we said in the previous slide. What is it I hope students will have learned? that will still be there and have value several years after the course is over. Significant learning, keep that in mind. And then you move back to, backward almost in time to the end of the course and ask yourself, so how will students demonstrate that to me? How will they be able to convince me that they have in fact achieved these learning outcomes that I set for them? And then you move back again to the middle and you look at the learning activities, the teaching and learning activities and what students will need to do during the course to be able to do well on the assessment activities. And that really is the, it's, it's, it's the whole process behind it. Um, there's, there's quite a lot of approaches which uses the components um, and, and are based on, on uh, the principle of constructive alignment and backward design. But I want to introduce you to one this morning. Um, which is called an integrated approach to course design. We won't have time to look at the whole model, but I did include a bibliography at the end. So if you do want to go and engage with the approach um, afterwards, there are resources available. Really what this does is it brings the principle of, of constructive alignment to life. We started with significant learning in the beginning, what we want our students to achieve. And then we looked at the principle of constructive alignment, where everything must talk to each other. Um, so this is a reconstruction of that. We have our significant learning in the middle, because that's what, where we want to go with our students. We define learning outcomes aligned to that. And then here's our teaching and learning activities and our feedback um, and assessment. The, the model is called the Thinks Model of Integrated Course Design. And it's quite a, it's, it's a much bigger model, but we are simply going to focus on this for the next, I'm going to get to my second part of my, um, of, my of, of the session this morning, and we're going to have a look at two examples um, of how to apply integrated course design uh, principles. So there's our significant learning and our three key aspects, learning outcomes, teaching and learning, and feedback and assessment. Right. So this brings us to 
our example. I just want to say a few words um, about just contextualize what we're going to do now um, before we move on. Um, I'm sure that m many of you are uh, familiar with taxonomies of learning um, that you can use, which usually is, a, is, is hierarchies of cognitive processes. Um, maybe most of you will be familiar with Bloom's taxonomy, which focuses on the level of knowledge um, that students acquire. I think adds a dimension to this um, with the taxonomy of significant learning is what he calls it, where he also looks at the types of knowledge, not only the levels of knowledge, but also the types of knowledge. And he divides it into six categories, that taxonomy. We're not going to have a look at all of them. We won't have time, but there's three of them. Foundational knowledge, application, and integration. The other three that he um, identified are human dimension, caring, and learning how to learn. But we're going to focus on the three. At the top here, we have our process, our three key uh, concepts that we looked at earlier, which 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 um, aligns to to the principles of a constructive alignment, and it really facilitates the process that we follow, starting with our learning outcomes. And and an easy way to do this is to ask yourself, where do I want to go? What is it I want my students to achieve? What would you like the impact of the course to be on students two to three years after the course is over? And what should distinguish your students um, who have taken this course from others who, who, who didn't take? Um, so, so really a cost the net a bit wider and think about it in that way. And then we move on to our assessment. Remember, we got backward to the end of our course. Um, and here we, you basically ask yourself, how will you and your students know that you that when you when you get where you want to when you get where when you get where you wanted to go? Um, and and here it's really looking beyond a content centered approach where you have two tests and exam and you assign grades and students pass or they fail. Um, looking at feedback and placing that at the center of your of your um, assessment procedures. Um, so that students learn in the process and, and that you reposition your assessment approach to form part of student learning and not only of measuring um, whether they've achieved uh, certain things or not. And that brings us to our teaching and learning activities. So now that you know where you want to go, you know how you, you will know that your students are there to how are you going to get there? How are you going to get your students there? Um, and here we, we, we look again at um, our, our golden thread, our engagement. So passive learning is challenged, a passive situation where students is just sitting and listening. We challenge that and we move beyond that. Um, the students remember and retain learning longer if they acquire it in an active way. Um, and that really is engaging students in doing things and thinking about the things they are doing. That's in simple terms what it entails. Okay, so let's get to our example. The example that um, we are going to look at is um, an interior design example. It's a degree program. So. The, the, the outcomes in this case discuss the roles and responsibilities of an interior designer, explain the interior design process and associated work stages. So here's your foundational basic knowledge in terms of this topic um, that your students will need. There will always be theoretical concepts that your students have to master at a particular level. You, you, you're not going to get beyond that, and that's not what we are, we are proposing. That forms the foundation of everything you do. So that is where you start. Um, in terms of your assessment, how they're going to demonstrate that to you is they're going to construct a work, a work stage guide. Now we have to look at how am I going to get them there? What am I going to do? So there's a lecture presentation in class or online, and then a class discussion about the roles and responsibilities, which speaks to that outcome and which is included in your work stage guide. And then there's an online discussion. So students have to create and submit a work stage guide, and then there's going to be an online discussion where they will get feedback 
from their peers and from the lecturer. Moving on to application. Here we're looking at um, uh, a site that students have to be able to um, analyze and then estimating design fees. So those are the two things that, that students are going to uh, focus on in this unit as it relates to application. We, we're going to have formative and summative assessment in this, in this instance. There we only had the, um, the formative aspect. So they're going to visit a site and compile a draft site survey. Before they do that, they're going to engage with an example online. There's an online resource and they're going to have a look at those templates, an existing template. And then they're going to do their site visits, submit their draft survey, and there's going to be a class discussion, again, where the peers and the lecturers will give them feedback. This will pull through to summative assessment, which will be a portfolio of evidence that they will submit um, pieces of work that they do during the semester right at the end of the semester, but keep in mind that there will be constant feedback um, uh, given. So there will be feedback given on that, and then they will, for summative purposes, for formative purposes, the draft for summative purposes after feedback, they will submit the detailed site survey, and eventually they will create a design fee proposal. But before students can get there, the lecturer will again have a presentation in class or online on the basic background and methods to, to uh, determine fees. And then an online discussion in which they look at an existing project and they estimate the design fees for that before they go and create their own design fee proposal. Now you want them to integrate, and this is quite simple, create an interior design proposal. I know there's gaps in between, but this is just an example to illustrate the principle. So a lot is still going to happen up there. Oh, gosh, now I clicked on something. Okay. So the formative assessment, again, there will be two components, formative and summative. You, want to, you don't want to over-assess students, but the formative elements build up to prepare them. Uh, for the summative, uh, summative opportunities. So I would just go to the combined interior design proposal template. Um, they'll have a class debate about components of a successful interior design proposal. Um, and in their online journal, they'll create their template and first get feedback from the lecturer and then move on to the summit of assessment. Again, the portfolio of evidence, refine the proposal template, and then populate it, create an interior design process, uh, a proposal. So you can see the process there, moving from looking at a template and the elements, creating a template, getting feedback, and then it moves into the summit of assessment. Okay, so this is it for our generic um, example. I want us now to focus on Connect um, for the last few minutes and how we can use the Magorial platform um, and its related um, tools to speak to our goals as it relates to Connect. So how, do we, how can we help in aligning courses, in building your course, um, in looking at Connect specifically? What, what can it do for you? So again, we have our triangle with our components, significant learning in the middle, our outcomes teaching and learning, and feedback and assessment. And um, this is not the only things we can do, but this is an example um, that I based on one of the courses um, at um, the University of Pretoria that I'm just going to share with you. And then that the, um, the uh, next, next one will be based on accounting. So just to have a look at this. So again, do you remember our three elements, our golden thread running through engagement, alignment, and um, uh, uh, learning centeredness. So we're gonna we're gonna jump on that again. We're gonna use that again. So in terms of our alignment, now just before I go on, remember that all of these things interact. They're interwoven. They're intertwined. This is not the only thing that relates to alignment. The whole thing relates to alignment. This is also going to lead to engagement, etc. I'm just isolating it. Um, for illustrative purposes, 
um, to talk you through the example to see how it works. So in terms of alignment for this specific example, if we look at the learning outcomes, um, we could create a customized textbook which is aligned to your learning outcomes. So Ralph said earlier that some institutions uh, keep their own content. Um, let's say in this case, you define your learning outcomes and now you have to go and look for content, not the other way around. So find content first and then think what your outcomes will be. You've defined your outcomes and now you look for content, but you can't find it in one, in one source. Um, so what we could do is put together a customized a product for you that speaks to your learning outcomes, that align to your learning outcomes. In terms of the engagement, I want to focus on the teaching and learning activities. It will also come into play in terms of feedback and assessment, but in terms of engagement, teaching and learning, um, remember that we want students to actively construct meaning, actively construct understanding, and in order for that, for them to do that, we have to put opportunities out there. We have to design learning activities that will facilitate this. And we find those in Connect. They're already set up. Um, they're aligned to that. They're aligned to, aligned to your outcomes and your, your customized book in this case, or, your, or, or if you can find a single textbook that speaks to most of your needs. Um, those of you who uh, attended the previous session will remember SmartBook. Um, or adaptive uh, reading exercises. Um, a lecturer from uh, Cape Peninsula, Peninsula Technicon, um, uh, you know, sorry, University of Technology, now I'm 10 years back, University of Technology talked about it and how to use it. So ongoing engagement with text through these adaptive reading exercises to cover the basic theory. As I said earlier, always your basic concepts remain key. If you do this, if students cover the basic theory through their smart book, you can refocus your contact time for other things. So through doing this, they also prepare and they come to class already um, knowing the basic concepts and understanding the basic concepts and you can take it from there um, and do more application in class, etc. And there's just two, two advantages for students. Um, they, can, they can access it any time, um, and when they focus on it, um, it it's, it's high impact. So when they do the smart book exercises, they're reading focused, and they're reading aligned to what they have to cover for that section. And then we're going to get to learning centeredness, feedback, and assessment. Um, the focus here for me is to to do a few things. It's to give students an opportunity to improve their performance by participating in Connect activities. And here we're talking, we're referring more to things like the quizzes. And the quizzes built into uh, Connect that you can set up for students that they can write. Um, and in doing this, they can also monitor their own progress. So they get immediate feedback, they do the quiz, this is your mark, this is what you got right, this is what you got wrong. So they get that feedback immediately. They practice in a safe environment without being exposed in front of anyone. You help them to pace, you encourage them to keep up to date, and they build confidence as they progress. So let's build it. Let's actually do it. Here's our example. It's in, in the accounting discipline, and I'm keeping it simple. Uh, just so that we can rather focus on um, quality as opposed to quantity in this regard and really make the most um, of, to, to, to make the most in terms of understanding how these tools can help you. So I only took the two um, categories of things to taxonomy this time, foundational knowledge and application. In terms of foundational knowledge, students need to be able to identify international financial reporting standards. An application, they have to apply them correctly in the preparation of a financial um, of financial statement. Right, learning outcomes, what's our next step? We move on to feedback and assessment procedures. So what do students have to do to prove that they've mastered this outcome? So for formative purposes, you're going to want students to complete the quiz, which deals with 
foundational knowledge of the IFRA. How are you going to get them there in terms of the teaching and learning activities? Particularly in terms of connect. Remember, I mean, you can have your online discussions, you can have your videos, upload your videos, etc. We're just focusing on, on connect for the moment. You um, can design it in a way that students have to complete the adaptive reading smart book activity related to this before the class, whether it's online or a contact, um, they, they, they engage with it before, before they, they, they have contact with you or the tutor. What does this do? Remember the previous slide where we looked at uh, the advantages for students? Ongoing engagement, they prepare for class, they monitor their own progress, they practice, they build their confidence, and you help them to pace themselves. And this is particularly important um, in, in our COVID situation. Um, the, I saw particularly with the first year students, they, they feel very lost. Um, and this is a way of letting them feel they keep in touch, even if they're not in touch with you directly all the time. Specifically, if you have 3,000 students like we do in the one course, it almost makes them feel that there is something on the other side. Um, and, and they know where they are and uh, when they should be doing uh, which units, et cetera. So that helps in that, it aids um, in building that structure. After they've done that, you now have your presentation in class or online based on Connect data indicating which context students found challenging. So in Connect, um, it, records, it records students' activity and it records which concepts, while students did the smart book exercises, which of the concepts, or which of the questions did they get wrong, what of the concepts they struggled with. And you can base on this data, you can base your um, in-class time. So refocus it, remember what we said, because students already have already mastered the basic concepts, you refocus your class time, and you are now able to really just, just uh, focus on the things um, that they that they struggled with and they think that they will need more support with and you know what those are beforehand before you go into your into your class. Uh, next. Okay, and there's just the the uh, complete description of what the quiz. After they've done this, now they go back to their formative assessment and they go write the quiz. It's done the basics. You've had your discussion in class, so they must have mastered, or at least I understand some of the concepts better. Now they go into their quiz, um, and they and they go and complete that. Again, they monitor progress, improve their performance, because typically this would count towards their marks. Um, that's a whole other conversation, but assessment drives learning. So if students aren't assessed and it doesn't count towards something, then we know they don't take it seriously. So unfortunately, but it is a reality and and um, we need to look at that. Obviously, you look at um, uh, the portion that it will count, but typically um, it should count towards something. Um, but it also helps them to build confidence and to face them. Right, so now we look at our application outcome. Um, and here that it will be a summative assessment. That was a formative one with the quiz. Now we're looking at a summative assessment because they're going to apply now and it's going to be an assignment. Working up to that, um, they are going to complete a connect application activity. So there are also application activities which are typically based on case studies, real life scenarios, videos, really applying the concept. Um, so they can do an activity like that. where after you can have an in-class tutor-led small group discussion or a lecture um, based on the case study or the real-world scenario, which they do that, uh, which, which they did there. And here you look at even more, you look at scaffolding, because this will lead on to the summative assessment that they're going to do. Um, they practice again and they build confidence. And then ultimately, in the assessment, in the summative assessment, uh, it will be an individual assignment based on a relevant real-world scenario, which is more challenging than the one you presented in this activity. It may be broader, it may involve more variables. So this is almost like a practice run um, to, to, to scaffold for them to ease them into your summative um, assessment over here. And that's how you build an integrated holistic course or how Connect can help you to build an integrated holistic course. Um, 
and based on bibliography with uh, a few sources, particularly our researchers think. If you don't have access to his book, which I would recommend, there's also an online resource um, that you can access over there with very useful information on the broader model and approach to uh, course design. And you'll see even more link, links um, uh, to, to the processes that we apply in Connect. And that is my story. Thank you so much. Thank you so much, Kira. That was very interesting to hear about the constructive alignment, and you laid out the whole process of learning outcomes, feedback and procedures, and the teaching and learning activities. Definitely covered some useful points, and I especially like the application side that you shared with us, and we hope that was useful to our audience to apply this in class as well. Thank you so much. That was very useful. I'm now going to pass over to Rob. So Rob, let me do that now. And then uh, I don't want to delay this anymore. But uh, yeah, let's do that. You should have the control now, Rob. OK, thanks. Thank you very much. And good morning, everyone. I'm speaking to you uh, from the UK. Um, and. I guess what we're trying to do here is sort of bring uh, bring Ralph's piece together, and, and most importantly, uh, sort of apply the um, the sort of principles that Gail. Sorry to um, interrupt, Rob. To. I can't hear you so well. Okay, bear with me. I don't know if it's my if it's, if it's just at my end. It's it's just a bit low. Is that any better? Okay, great. That's fine. Thank Wonderful. you. Thank you. Sorry about that. Yeah, just saying that we were going to bring um, everything together from uh, from what, what Ralph said and, and also what Gail said with regards to sort of applying the the principles with um, a couple of platforms that we've had um, for for a number of years and I know that a lot of you have seen um, before and, and really layering on uh, what we've uh, what we've seen in the last um, sort of six to nine months with the, the pandemic and the realities of of particularly incoming students um, and the um, the sort of environment that, that students are now studying um, within. So um, what's on screen here is, as you can see, um, perhaps um, some things that are, are, are sort of impacting you directly, um, but um, in general, um, what we've heard from, um, from academics um, throughout the region, um, sort of both throughout Europe and also in, in the Middle East and Africa, um, and what we thought was how can we uh, use the, the resources and the content, um, as, as Ralph said, um, with regards to not only the traditional content, but also the, the new platforms that we have available um, to, to provide um, a, a solution for, for academics and, and students to, to give them uh, the best chance of success um, as they embark on their, uh, their higher education uh, studies or move from perhaps undergraduates, postgraduates um, in a completely different discipline um, and, and most importantly um, sort of offset um, sort of any, any risks of, of students being overwhelmed and feel anxious, feeling anxious about uh, university and supporting the academic community uh, to ensure that um, they're able to provide students with uh, the support they need to um, have a very, very enjoyable and successful university career. And the, the reality is, um, isn't just the um, the, the sort of pandemic. It's also the, the delivery. Um, be interesting to sort of hear maybe on the chat the, the different types of, of delivery that are, are taking place uh, throughout South Africa, um, sort of now and, and obviously sort of planned for, for March onwards. Um, just the, I, I guess we all take for granted just the, the, the ability to, to have a, a classroom full of students uh, and what that um, what that look, could look like um, in the future. We're we're seeing that obviously sort of where um, where there is campus delivery, there's lots of rules and regulations. Um, there's, there's online and offline together. Um, there's, there's lots of considerations. So the, the task that you have um, to deliver um, your, your courses is, is probably getting harder and harder um, just from the logistics point of view, uh, let alone um, sort of compelling and enjoyable resources to provide. So what we what we've put together um, is is taking all of those those assets and the content that that you've probably sort of used in in the past um, and sort of brought them all together in a in a sort of instructionally learning designed um, platform 
Um, probably a little bit more pressure here on me now that, that Gail's just gone, gone through all of the basics, so hopefully uh, it ticks a, a number of the boxes. Now, for those that, um, that haven't seen or, or used Connect um, before, um, this is a platform that, um, that sort of houses all of our content, um, and, and that, that sort of starts from everything from the, the sort of very traditional sort of teaching and learning resources, all of the, uh, the sort of PowerPoints, um, sort of test banks and things like that, all the way through to our, our sort of most um, sort of immersive engaging resources like adaptive reading and smart book, um, lots of um, sort of simulations and, and lots of analytics to help uh, sort of power um, sort of learner performance um, and, and understand learner journeys for, for the teaching um, staff. All of the resources that you're about to see can um, sort of embed within um, the, the sort of blackboards, the Moodles, the canvases, all of those sort of LMS or VLE um, the sort of platforms. Um, uh, also, Connect is, is um, as Gail said, sort of tagged to sort of various um, sort of outcomes. So things like sort of Bloom's levels uh, is is all sort of embedded throughout, um, and and this allows you to uh, to sort of provide um, sort of that one-to-one -one tuition um, at scale, sort of online uh, or offline. So pulling the uh, the sort of connect package together and um, the, the sort of wider services that, that we offer. Um, the, the platform will essentially sort of help that um, sort of pre-arrival or what I would say early arrival um, confidence. So those students that might not have had or uh, a sort of full um, sort of um, introduction or sort of, um, sort of learning sort of pathway um, that is, is what we would call usual or normal um, going into university. They might have been homeschooled, they might have have not done sort of all of their, their sort of final exams, their, um, their sort of path to higher education might have been disrupted. Um, we're seeing that there's a sort of big impact there on, on sort of um, on stress and anxiety around that. So this is a, a platform that can help that. Um, those, those sort of concerns are also shared by some parents. Um, so we're able to um, sort of put their minds at rest uh, as well. And also most importantly, we're able to provide um, people like yourselves on this on this call um, a, a sort of platform to, to help um, should um, should you need um, to support those students as they move into uh, their their first year of study. So the solution um, itself, we have um, a, a business and economics um, package. We've then sort of got the, the sciences covered as well, and we also have embedded throughout all four of those, or as a standalone option. A, a full um, sort of adaptive connect um, master, which is a, a sort of student success adaptive learner. Now, the delivery, as I mentioned before, this can be fully integrated uh, through um, all of the, the sort of standards for VLEs and, and LMSs um, as part of, of our implementation process, which I'll take you through shortly. Um, all sort of training is provided. Um, this is sort of slightly new. It's it's within Connect, but it's a slightly new um, sort of uh, platform. So if um, if you wanted to, to sort of use it um, sort of in pilot to to sort of test it um, ahead of ahead of March or any rollouts, um, you're absolutely able to do that. Um, it might be that you only want to use it for for sort of a, a one or one or two cohorts rather than sort of full departments. Um, so the, there's an ability to sort of pick and mix the uh, the suite that that you need uh, to use. Um, and, and also that as we sort of move uh, forward through the, the, the sort of rollout and delivery, um, we'll then be on hand to provide um, all of the, the engagement statistics to, to give you that, um, that information so you can identify exactly how, how students are, are progressing and are they ready for their, their studies as they move into uh, their first year. So just an overview of the, the couple of, of um, of packages, the, the sciences, um, as I, as we sort of heard from Gail, um, we have adaptive technology and smart book. Uh, we also have sort of a, another um, adaptive package called Learn Smart Prep, um, which is a sort of gamified adaptive um, sort of engine that, that sort of helps um, sort of individualize that sort of learner journey um, so students can sort of confidently understand uh, the basics before coming into, um, into their their, uh, their degree program. We then sort of embed some of those smart book readings uh, that are very much sort of introductory material. Um, and then we have um, sort of set up things like unlimited practice material with instant feedback 
um, and and also um, sort of extra resources like an uh, anatomy atlas, so students self-paced can um, sort of review um, in in their own time. Um, and and the, most importantly, there is the option of of sort of dropping in a, a sort of pre-arrival or early um, semester uh, sort of diagnostic test. So students will be able to do this. And then as the, the, the teaching team or department, you'd be able to see the level of knowledge in that subject area um, as they embark on their study. So even if they've had a disrupted um, sort of pathway into higher education due to the pandemic, um, you're able to see exactly what they know and, and then really support them on an individual level um, using the sort of platform and those, those human insights as well. For the, um, the business and economics course, we've got um, sort of all of what we would say the sort of typical first year sort of study areas are, and then we've also um, embedded um, sort of various skills specific for the the, the, the sort of business um, the business school. We've also embedded uh, sort of communication and emotional intelligence skills. Um, you know, we we heard um, at Len for a lot of feedback that um, it would be great to sort of equip. Uh, students with communication skills, especially if they've been um, sort of at home for, for long periods during the pandemic and, and maybe their sort of communication skills have been impacted as they, they continue to, to sort of learn and grow as, as um, young adults. Um, and also just to, to note that um, what, um, what you'll see shortly and, and obviously the, the sort of logins that we can share afterwards, um, this is just a, a sort of prototype that, that's been built. We can um, sort of customize anything um, so if, if you're looking at something in a particular discipline that you might not see on this list, and same with the sciences, uh, we've, also, we've already started to uh, develop things for, um, for psychology um, and, and also engineering. Um, so if there's any of the things that you, you sort of like the idea of but you can't see on this list, um, so get in touch with us and, and we'll be able to uh, sort of build that out uh, as well. And um, as I sort of touched on there, there's a lot of what we would call sort of non sort of discipline content. So I, I would probably um, sort of guess that when people say McGraw Hill, everyone thinks about textbooks. Um, these are the sort of resources that go above and beyond um, sort of textbooks and, and deliver things in a more interactive, uh, interactive way, as we saw from from Gail's session. Those different types of, of learner approaches, um, sort of that um, sort of application based approaches the active learning piece. So um, there's, there's things that can be uh, delivered um, that will go above and beyond just the, the textbooks. So by sort of adding all of these types of, of sort of content and assets into the, the platform, um, we're able to give um, students and, and the teaching teams um, the, the sort of best um, sort of in-class uh, resources to help as they prepare. So, so I'll share, um, I know we're, we're sort of pressed for time, so I'll be sharing um, sort of these slides after there's also an embedded video uh, on, on this slide that sort of walks you through um, the, uh, the platform itself. Um, but um, for now, what I'll do is sort of take you through just a, a series of, of what it looks like. Um, and, and then sort of perhaps if anyone is interested, we can sort of take you into a deep dive following the session. So firstly, um, we've, we've sort of pulled everything into, um, into those sort of easy to navigate signposted um, sort of study areas. So this could be something that can be delivered um, whether students are at home, they're, they're yet to join the, the university or, or sort of early in that, um, that sort of uh, that first semester. So sort of down the, down the left hand side, there's an ability to sort of contact um, the department or, or sort of McGraw Hill for, for help. But then, as you see on the right-hand side, things are sort of put into folders, so um, every student is sort of well uh, well supported. So, firstly, sort of um, some resources around sort of mental health and, and wellness, um, and then um, a, a sort of a suite of resources on um, on sort of study online, um, and then those sort of skills that I'll go into in more detail in a moment. Um, and then uh, what we start to see is the, um, the, the sort of discipline specific. So if you're sort of teaching a business course that has you know, sort of three to six modules in the first year, you're able to sort of cherry pick those sort of three to six subject areas and then deploy the, the resources. So for instance, the, um, the, the skills um, section, um, these, are, these aren't just, you know, sort of, um, Discipline specific uh, for, for business. Um, these are oh, sorry, skills for university, as we heard when we were doing our, our research. So 
so lots of critical thinking, and these are delivered through sort of interactive um, sort of um, exercises as well. These aren't just sort of true and false multiple choice questions, um, and and these sort of help. Um, help the sort of students um, sort of understand um, the sort of uh, the skills that they may need for the university. So as you can see um, here, there is a self-assessment on, on sort of time management. So students will answer a series of questions that can reflect on their um, their sort of ability to, to manage their time. And then on goal setting, this is a, um, a sort of interactive sort of chat forum um, where students sort of um, add their, their their answers and. And they're able to sort of get a, a sort of overview of how to set um, sort of a, a sort of learning goal um, or, or sort of goals for the um, for the semester um, at um, at scale um, using uh, the online platform. Then we have uh, sort of embedded uh, things like Excel skills, where there'll be a sort of video walkthrough of of the different uh, functions uh, within Excel, um, and those those are together with with questions. Um, as well. Preparing for your students is one thing, so depending on how your, your sort of campus will be configured um, in, in the future, we've also embedded our study, um, our study skills for student success material. So as you can see here down the left hand side, these are, these are just the, the sort of types of, um, of resources available within this, all complete online, and, and this resource can actually be used online and offline um, as well. Um, so we've also got a, a sort of full suite of resources to help students prepare if they are going to be sort of studying partly online as well. We then come to the course specific uh, preparations. So this is where we would sort of typically set maybe some um, some curated smart book readings and then some practice materials. So very sort of introductory um, basic level um, readings to sort of start to um, sort of encourage students to, to read about the, the different discipline, but by sort of um, allowing students to uh, sort of take this through the smart book program, they're able to sort of continually sort of refer back to it. They're able to answer questions based on their level of confidence to sort of build up uh, that level of knowledge. And most importantly, as, as the, the sort of teaching team, you're able to see um, that, that level of knowledge uh, throughout. And then, as I mentioned um, earlier on, we have the ability to embed a, a sort of pre-arrival knowledge check. So this is this sort of doubles as that sort of diagnostic test. You know, if, if this was a, a, um, a sort of general sort of business program that they were sort of studying um, sort of quants and qualitative sort of subjects, it might look a little bit like what's on screen here. They'll do sort of five to ten short questions um, to, to sort of answer um, their, that will then sort of um, essentially uh, reflect their their level of knowledge as they as they embark on their studies. Those um, those analytics, which I'll go through in a moment, um, will sort of sit with uh, with yourselves as as the teaching team, and you're able to to then plan accordingly. Now, as Gail mentioned, quite a, a number of you have have likely seen our adaptive um, reader smart book before. Um, so this is how we've embedded. Um, that into into this platform, so you're able to um, sort of create a, uh, a sort of time on task um, that that is sort of comfortable for a student um, as they are embarked on their study. So I, I've set sort of time on task here of sort of 15 to 30 minutes um, to to allow students to, to not be overwhelmed um, and ensure that they they sort of take their their time and and they don't. Um, they're not sort of feeling that sort of, um, overwhelmed um, around having uh, too much to do um, as they prepare for their their studies, and and then the the sort of levels of questions. These aren't questions that are are very very um, sort of difficult. These are questions that um, that come from the, the the preparation, the reading material that's embedded in the system. But most importantly, it just gives um, the the university and the teaching team um, that level of uh, of understanding um, of, of what those students know as they embark on the program. So the the analytics, um, so everything that you've seen, and I, and I know this, um, you know, a lot of people look at um, a platform like this and thinking, well, I've got you know sort of two or three thousand students, or we've got you know sort of a thousand students on a single module or, or, or more. Um, everything you've seen then um, floats into our 
our sort of um, reporting dashboard. Um, so one of the first things um, that are, are, is very easy to use is the, the at-risk report. So essentially what this does is, is pulls together all of the sort of insights from Connect and just sort of gives, um, gives you a very quick indication of, of how students are going. So this takes in everything from frequency of logins and, and the sort of scores that, uh, that students have, have achieved together with the number of, um, the number of, sort of uh, pieces of work that they've um, also attempted as well. We then start to uh, sort of look at the, the sort of the mastery of a particular question. So a lot of this will be very familiar to you and, and these are the sorts of things that will um, sync with, with your grade book in, in your LMS. But what I wanted to sort of just spend a couple of seconds on is, is how we use the reports in, in other places. Um, we sort of take um, exercise uh, three in the middle where there's, a, um, there's an average um, sort of score of 58%, and we, we use that to, to sort of obviously sort of inform our, our sort of teaching in other places where um, we can take that exercise and maybe sort of spend five or ten minutes on the next virtual seminar or the, or the sort of next lecture to, to sort of walk students through how to approach that, because um, here sort of four in, four in ten students have, have potentially got that wrong. Or we can either even sort of look at the one of the 58% of students that got it right and maybe sort of invite them to, to share um, how they approach the, the question. So there's lots of different ways of using uh, the, the reports. And then um, again, the, the sort of big data view, um, you know, if, you, if you've got sort of a couple of thousand students coming into the department or into um, one of these pathways, um, you want to see very quickly where, where student performance is at and, and how you can quickly um, sort of identify um, those students that, that require your immediate um, support. So firstly, um, we, we then we're able to see exactly on, on that sort of that graph the, the relationship between scoring and, and the time spent um, and, and then diving in one step later to, to sort of actually see the, um, the individual and the, the assignments, so we can then start to, to look at the, the details. Um, and then if you're setting particular pieces of work, we can start to identify um, exactly um, which, which pieces of work are, are maybe sort of too difficult. So there's a couple here on the sort of the bottom right that students have spent a, um, a very long time in relationship to other pieces of work, but their score is below um, the average score that you set, which is the bar across the middle. So it might be that um, the questions that have, have been selected there might be either too difficult, they might be sort of covering things that students aren't comfortable learning yet. Um, there's, there's lots of, of different um, sort of, uh, ways in, in sort of looking at that data and then sort of making decisions sort of based on that and, and sort of helping the, the students as they continue their learning journey. So here we can sort of flip that approach around and see the particular sort of a quiz and then that, those sort of topics um, and also the students that, that may be struggling um, on that as well. Now there's lots of, lots of things obviously to, to consider and as we said, you know, not only how you sort of teach your course um, in, in March and beyond, what does the university look like, how are the students feeling, how are their parents feeling, how, how is the department feeling. Um, so we're here to help with that sort of rollout and delivery and um, a few of the sessions that I've done similar to this, uh, we get um, a, a few questions. I just wanted to address these in case they, they sort of pop up in the, the chat. Um, what, what we'll be sharing sort of after it is a, um, is a sort of designed um, sort of approach um, for, for this platform so you can actually sort of use it um, sort of outside, uh, sort of straight out of the box. Um, the, the, the most popular way is sort of taking the, the sort of out-the-box approach and then sort of using some of those, um, those principles that Gail walked us through um, to, to sort of, I guess, sort of level up or sort of further modify and, and sort of um, customize the, the approach depending on how you want to, um, to, to actually sort of teach the course and, and the implementation team are on hand to, to help with, with that. Um, obviously, if, if you're new to um, if you're new to Connect, uh, we can we can set you up with with a sort of overview session to, to get you all set up. If you already use Connect, um, we can we can just simply add the what you've seen today. We can actually push that into your account 
um, as soon as um, you uh, you ask for it. So that's no problem either. And then on the, the sort of reporting and the results, and some of these um, sync with within the the LMS gradebook. And um, some of the more sort of complex, unfortunately, the the, the sort of VLEs don't support um, sort of the, the more sort of complex reports, but we're able to um, sort of walk you through those um, on a regular basis, depending on on this sort of delivery uh, and support plan that uh, that you prefer. And the the sort of overarching sort of uh, approach to our support is is that sort of um, that sort of goal of, of of the course or the module or, or what you want students to to sort of know at the very beginning. Um, so we sort of create a, a sort of um, a training program um, for, for the academic team and based on, on those course goals. Um, and then we sort of work with you to support and um, sort of building whether that's sort of out the box, whether that's sort of modifying the out the box approach. Um, and, and all in all that sort of helps you um, to get ready for, for either um, the start of class in, um, in March or sort of the ability to deliver that to students before they join the, the university uh, as well. So the sort of Thursday of class, we can, we can sort of help onboard students um, sort of before uh, or during the, uh, the start of semester. And as I mentioned before, the, the reports and, and ongoing service are, are there depending on how you want to uh, deliver things. So just to, to sort of wrap up, um, the, the sort of that, that sort of true end-to-end -end service, probably everyone on this call when they, they think about Memorial Hill, it's textbooks. What this is is sort of taking those textbooks and sort of leveling them sort of up to, to reflect the, um, the world that we're living in to, to sort of support students and the, the academic staff um, as, as you deliver your modules moving, uh, moving forward. Um, Obviously, students can sort of move seamlessly from this sort of early semester pre-arrival into their sort of full um, full use. So, as you saw from from Gail, a, a sort of um, an accounting um, sort of option. So, they might jump from from Head Start directly into um, into their accounting course that's that's powered by Connect, um, and that's on exactly the same login. You know, there's a sort of seamless transition there uh, as well. Um, and and most importantly, all of the the sort of support and and reports that we have in here. Sort of helps identify those areas of concern, closes the learning gaps, and and supports um, your, your yourselves and and your incoming students uh, for a really enjoyable and engaging learning experience. Thank you very much. Thanks, Ross. That was really insightful. Thank you so much. We'll now move over to the Q&A. We've received a couple of questions as well that have come in. So thank you so much for your questions. We'll just cover this now in our q and I'm going to pass Rob's slide over and quickly jump here. Okay, and if you have any questions for our presenters, please drop them in the Q&A and we will just ask through. So thank you, all three of you. That was really ties up the whole thing really well. So thanks a lot for doing that for us. I'm just going to check the questions now. Uh, again, if you have any questions, please make sure you drop them for us, and we will just cover this now with our presenters. Uh, Gail, there is a question. And there, Gail, there are wonderful comments that have come, come in for you as well. I wonder if you got a chance to read them. Hi, thanks. I saw some of them. I had a look, but I was, I was <laughs> listening to Rob, but I had a quick look um, every now and then. Thank you so much. Yeah, this was really brilliant and it aligns with shifting to a more facilitating approach in aligning content to a learning center. Thank you, Gail. Okay, Gail, there's a question for you actually. Uh, it's from Ravi. It says, really like this approach. Thank you. My question is, how would you add program goals and learning objectives to the model? I'm not sure I understand the question, um, but our, I mean, the, the learning outcomes and, and goals will be the first um, aspect that you would, um, the, basically the first key um, function, a uh, feature of this, of the model where you would start. Um, I'm not sure if you refer to program, whether you are referring to exit level outcomes and how do you translate. Um, uh, exit outcomes into module outcomes for a particular module. I um, think that, 
Sorry? I think that is it. Okay, well, that is a whole a whole session <laughs> um, to do that. <laughs> Obviously, this function is actually quite a good question because um, uh, constructive alignment functions on all the levels. Um, you can you can design a, one single learning unit or theme within a module using the using a principle or a module or a year of study, um, an NQF level for a, for a, for a, um, a whole cohort or program level. Um, you will use the same principle um, uh, to design it. It will obviously just um, become more and more detailed as you drill down. Um, the, 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 it, it's quite a compli complicated to translate exit level outcomes because they're program outcomes. So they cover the whole program, and you are probably looking at one module. Um, and the other complicating factor is the, ex is the um, level descriptive for each NQF level that you will also have to um, consider um, and then unravel it and, and, and unpackage it. So it's not, an, it's, it's not a simple, straightforward question to answer unless I misunderstood the question. Um, then I'll try again if you if you uh, just write a, um, a follow-up question. But otherwise, it is something that one would have to engage in um, in more detail, but it's possible, and it's, um, I mean, that's the way to go. You, you, that's what you write in, in, in um, implying that you need to translate and you need to deduct and uh, um, pull your module outcomes out of the exit level program and outcomes. Mm -hmm. uh, yes, that's, so, so I don't know if that, if that um, participants want to just perhaps um, try or, or just um, react in terms of the question, maybe I misunderstood it. Yes, feel free, feel, please feel free to let us know in the chat box and we, good for now. Okay, we've got a response. <laughs> Thank you so much. I've got more questions that have come in uh, probably during Rob's session actually. So the first one is, hi there, sorry, I may have missed a couple of things, so my question may have been answered. How is this platform different to current learning management system that universities already have? Is content provided that lecturer won't have to upload his herself? Yes, so the um, all of the, the content that the Royal Hill um, sort of creates is is available for upload into into Blackboard. Um, there's a, there's another question I think sent privately. So um, essentially, the the McGraw Hill Connect um, platform can be um, sort of integrated with Blackboard free of charge. Um, so the, the integration piece is free, then the sort of actual platform access is, it, it sort of attracts a, a sort of fee based on sort of the, the student usage. Um, but with regards to the sort of difference between a, a sort of an LMS and, and, and something like Connect, um, the, uh, the, the sort of analytics and the, the repository together with the um, the sort of, uh, I guess, the things like simulations and, and adaptive reading is, is the sort of main main difference. Um, it, the uh, what we would say is that sort of using a, an LMS in in sort of collaboration with Connect is probably the, the sort of best sort of learning experience. So the the sort of blackboard sort of schedules the the sort of material, and then you're sort of using um, sort of curated content um, from from Blue Hill that is embedded within the blackboard interface or, or any LMS. Thanks, Rob. For Rob, uh, can you please elaborate on student success head uh, student success head start master? Is this a generic platform which can be used across all departments? Yeah, absolutely. So this this sort of looks at the um, the sort of foundations to to sort of having a, a strong university experience. So for those that have already got access to Connect, um, you can sort of go in and, and sort of add, add a subject or add a course by just sort of typing in Connect Master and, and you'll see the, the selection of content there. Um, so the, uh, the student's um, success um, is, is sort of uh, lots of sort of skills and, and sort of resource of, um, resources and a repository of, of adaptive sort of learning tools to, to sort of help students prepare for everything from sort of group work and, and sort of living on campus through sort of taking things online um, all the way to, um, you know, sort of writing in an academic setting as well. Thanks, Rob. Another, another one says, a challenge with feedback is protecting desk back questions. 
in the introductory courses, which are not open to assignments, applied questions, especially when feedback is supplied online, meaning that students copy and share with the next year students. Do you have a way of dealing with this? Yeah, absolutely, and, and that's, a, yeah, a, a, that's a real global issue. Um, all of our test banks um, sort of have the ability to, to sort of scramble questions and answers, um, and a lot of our quant um, sort of subjects have algorithmic questions. So while every student might get a similar looking question, the numbers are different for every single student. So they can sort of copy and paste um, the, the sort of question, but the numbers will change um, as well. So um, there's a couple of ways that we um, we sort of uh, use um, to sort of do do that. And then the, the final piece is we have sort of test banks and question banks. So we sort of pull sort of questions from our, our sort of wider repository um, together with something that may be just focused around that individual book as well. So um, there'll be thousands mm -hmm. of questions in some cases. Okay. And um, the other one is, how long does Connect Head Start course take to complete by a student? So again, similar to what Gail was saying around sort of how, how things are configured, so time on task and, and things like that, but what we've actually done is, is set this up as a 90-day access window, um, and, and it can obviously be created. We would sort of suggest that it would take somewhere between sort of 20 and, and sort of 40 hours, depending on on the, the volume of, of content um, that is that is assigned, um, but it's a, a 90 day license. So the idea being is that um, students can sort of start this sort of in the sort of six, eight weeks sort of before class and then sort of use it for the first few weeks um, as they embark on their studies as well. Thanks, Ralph. And there's one for Ralph. Uh, where can we find out more information regarding a partnership with McGraw-Hill? Well, um, thank you. Thank you for the question. Well, I'm happy to connect with them directly and have a conversation else. Uh, they can, you know, we can reach out to them through the South Africa team and uh, have a have a more of a one on one because uh, the thing is, we don't have a one one size fits all partnership. We we try to mold it based on the customer requirements and what the university is trying to achieve. So. Uh, a partnership agreement between one university from one university to another can look at you know completely different. Thanks, Ralph. And I guess there's a follow-up question that says, if the integration is free of charge, Rob, can individual lectures as myself do it, or should a department or university collaborate preferably? So depending on how your sort of IT infrastructure is configured, um, they sometimes have what we call a, a sort of um, an account key, um, which is um, a sort of virtual key that sort of unlocks um, third-party uh, tools into, into Blackboard LMS. So, um, I mean, literally, if you, if you sort of Google from the Gore Hill Blackboard, there's a page with all of the information um, sort of on, on there. Um, sometimes the McGraw Hill um, sort of uh, so sort of widget is is discoverable, but you need to have the the sort of IT team um, sort of actually um, sort of push that live into into the course. Thanks. Uh, a very common one. We know that many students struggle with lack of devices and internet connectivity. Is there a way around this? So the. Um, there is now, um, for those that, that might already be using Connect and are aware of it, that we have a, what we call a Read Anywhere app. Um, so you're able to download um, the, the sort of readings um, onto the app, and then that sort of syncs with your online Connect account. As you can imagine, things like the, um, the sort of questions and the, the, the sort of interactive activities require an internet connection, but there is a whole host of, of reading material um, that is able to be done sort of online, downloaded to the Read Anywhere app. Thanks. Hope that answers the question. We know time is up now, but I'm just checking if we have any more questions in the chat box or the Q&A. Our academic year runs to 31st Jan. However, the course expires 31st December. Without the whole process of new registration per student and course, can the date be extended? especially for those students that fail in no student left behind concept. I think that's a question that one of our uh, learning solution consultants can pick up. 
perhaps uh, right now and answer you right back on the Q&A box itself. Okay, I yes, guess sir. that comes up. Sorry. Did I interrupt yeah, anyone? Yes, I was just, so, yeah, so sorry. All, all of our um, all of our platforms can be sort of configured and extended. Um, we do this on a regular basis. Um, we always want to support sort of retakes and, and students that need an extension. Um, so uh, the duration can always be um, sort of customised to the, the sort of course um, duration or extension that's required. Oh, great! Thank you, Rob, for covering this. And thank you for all our participants for joining us today. Um, you can stay in touch with us on our social channels um, and, you know, and drop us an email if you have any questions. You will receive the recording of this session along with the Certificate of Participation next week. Our next webinar will feature deep LMS integration and implementation support, reporting and analytics. So make sure you look up for an invite to register, or you can follow us on our LinkedIn to hear more about it, because that's where we are going to announce when we're having this webinar. I'll drop our link there so you know. Uh, other than that, thank you so much for joining us today, and have a great day. Thank you all, and goodbye from Beirut. Thanks, everyone.